Hey folks, well here we go. This is uh, something a little different and the reason I'm showing it is because it's uh, something that we're going to get more into as in cattle working. And if you could just think about cow work and good cow work and good horsemanship, what the big picture is is that I go to a ranch, this is the Diamond W, and um, work with the cattle and we do it in a low stress fashion low stress meaning there's no whips hot shots yelling big cloud of dust you just take your time you now the whole thing about what you're looking at is all about the word take your time there's a whole lot of outfits that just don't do this and there's several reasons and I get it I've worked on big outfits and there's some big outfits where when they start the roundup they're going strong like in up north when I worked up there you didn't take a breath till Thanksgiving then you that was a short breath so you when you're dealing with thousands ahead obviously it's a different scenario you're dealing with the weather you're dealing with trucks everything every place you go is different but the idea of what I'm trying to get across what I think I can do best is people with 300 head or less and there's a big help shortage in the country and I'd like to show that you can actually get things done with a lot less people in the corral and uh, my goal as a cowboy when I was riding for bait for outfits was that when we got to the corral if the boss would ask me to stay on my horse that means I did good so what your watch is is what you're watching now is is called fence weaning and what it means is the time of year when you need to take the calves away from the cows. And the weaning process is what I just told you. Now it'll be three days of, of stress on the cow and the calf. And what we try to do is set up a situation where the stress is minimum. And when I talk about stress, what I mean is, is on a lot of places you wean calves and you keep them in a corral or, or like a feedlot or just a set of corrals and then the cows get trailed somewhere else and what happens is the calves walk the walls we call it and they walk around and around and around and they create dust now and if there's different kind of weather they create mud deep mud and it's very stressful for them so the sickness level goes way up now another way I've done it is to put the cows in a corral and have the calves outside the corral on a little trap that's green grass and water and the calves they ball and then they walk off and eat and they come back and ball. And 24 hours later you take the cows and go the opposite direction to another pasture and it works out really good. There's very few cows that ever even think of coming back. And I'll explain to you one of the reasons why later but what you're, what you're seeing is us just trying to ease around these cattle and, and do this stressful project with no stress. And the, what, what I want you to watch is how Mike and I are just kind of sitting still. Cows and calves have been going through that gate all morning. We started at 6 a.m. or excuse me, I was I caught them in bed at dark 30 and then we, we corralled them and started working and then we got done at 9 o'clock. And we worked over 150 head of cows through the gate. But anyway, they, the calves already watched this all morning, so we just sat still and let them escape in their mind, which means they walked down looking for their ball and mother, so we didn't have to move. And that's the big premise on what this video is all about. Now this is in California, north of Los Angeles, and it's about 10, 12,000 acres. And it's, um, perfect setup for me because you know I, I day work I don't work full time on a ranch because I got a lot of other things to do but it works out good for me because the horses I ride are usually the ones that people are buying from me and uh, Mike the owner he's real big on low stress so I really enjoy riding for him it's a real pleasure now what we did was open the gate that the cows were in and we're allowing the cows to walk out. Now, if you notice, they are in fact walking. They're not stampeding the gate and they're not running out. This is the benefit of low stress cattle handling. A lot of places I've been, when you throw that gate, you really need to hunt a hole because you're going to get stampeded. Well, this is not a stampede. These are cattle that are just walking out the gate. 
Now we already got some bait out there and that's these calves standing along the fence. Now you'll see the the fence, how well it's built, and that's why we can wean using that fence. When you have the calves on one side of the fence and the cows on the other. And the, the cows will come back to this corral to get water. And they can do that, but they can't get to the calves. The calves have got water in the trap they're standing in, and they can't get to the cows. So you watch the, the flow of the cows on the one side of the fence and the calves leaving the alley on the other side. And that there again, that's the whole point of what we do. Now there's nobody in the back of them pushing them. It's just me and Mike. Mike's on the other end. So the cows are drawing the calves out and of course they watch ahead of them and they see other calves leaving. So you, this is, this is Bud Williams basics. And Bud Williams, for those of you who don't know, was the Tom Dorrance of livestock handling. And I was fortunate enough to go to some of his clinics before he quit. And uh, he was an absolute genius. And he was very, he taught a lot like I do, I'm proud to say, that he just, he did, there was no BS. He told you how it was. And if you didn't like it or something, just, you know, don't come back. But he told you how he actually did it. And um, the benefit I personally got from it was after going to Bud Williams, it changed the way I ride my colts because Bud shows you angles, straight lines, backing up, stepping over. And I'm watching him do this on foot because that's how he teaches. And I'm watching him thinking, well, if I did that with my colts, they'd get handier and they'd get on the hind, end quart, uh, hind quarters faster, which it worked. From that day forward, I started riding my colts in my grazing cell and I'd walk straight lines, eye, shoulder, hip. And uh, just look up Bud Williams and you'll see something about him. Now here's how it actually works. These, these cattle were gathered this, this morning in the dark, put in the krell, and now it's 9 a.m. and they're weaned officially. And th this is the process, what you're watching right now. So the cattle are in good shape. And this is, we're in a really, really serious drought country might cut his numbers in half because of the drought and uh, the the feed as you can tell it's up in the, the ranch 90 percent of it lays up on pretty steep country and there's the classic example right there and what bud williams taught us in the feedlot when we were weaning was when you put the green calves in the corral you start riding to the corner and stopping them as they're walking then they'll turn and they'll go to another corner and then you walk over to the other corner and stop them. And it, it used to take me on a 2,000 head feedlot and we were receiving cattle of course for weeks at a time being weaned. It would take me about three days by coming in the corral and riding diagonally across and stopping them every time they started walking the fences. And then in three days they start getting what we call bunk broke where they go, they'll hear the feedlot fire up and they know that the feed's coming out of the auger so it was three days as opposed to two weeks of and the the reason one of the main reasons was the shrink is a given but we really saved on the shrink I'm going to tell you three percent as opposed to five and the um, of course that got them on the bunks quicker which brought our average daily gain up and the big deal was, was that the amount of sickness was almost nothing compared to normal when they get what we call dust pneumonia up north or when they're up to their belly in mud, they get pneumonia from the stress of weaning plus the mud. So this place here, it's, you know, there's a reason why we cowboy down here. The weather's perfect. It's, you can tell by the hills it's dropped out, but it doesn't matter. We've got good weather and we've got good conditions and he's got the stocking rate down where it belongs. So this water trough you'll see later is within 100, 100 feet of the corral. And uh, you can see the kind of ground we're on. It's pretty rocky, tough ground. And uh, I guess you'd call it marginal, but it, uh, it works. Now what we've done is the calves made it all the way down to the corner, which was about a quarter mile from the corrals. And so Mike's gonna ride to the corner and send them back. He didn't run down there, he didn't trot down there, he walked down there. So he's gonna send the cattle down the fence and double check the gate. 
because there is a gate right there in that corner and then you can see the, the mothers on the other side. Now there's your kind of country we're cowboying in up behind you there and that's what we call a mosaic. And this country's famous for brush fires. And what happens is it'll burn and they get it out and it'll leave some brush. And this is probably, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 miles in from the ocean. But there's an actual marine layer that makes it here sometimes. And when it does, if there's fire, it suppresses the fire because of the moisture. It's like fog. Well, that's also what creates a mosaic. Mosaic means you're going to have spotty vegetation, which gives every habitat for the mouse all the way to the mountain lion. And that's kind of what we're after in this country. If you can create that mosaic, you create a really good deal. And in that brush you're looking at, it's kind of like Nevada. You, you drive down the highway and you think there's nothing there, but if you actually get on a horse and get up in the country, you'll find there's a lot of good grass up in those mountains. Well, same here. Another chapter is what we call placing cattle. That's when we take pairs, and we'll take ten pair maybe, or eight, whatever we see in front of us in the morning, and we'll drive them up a draw and then place them on good grass up on a hill and then they'll go to their closest water because we go by the water on the way and then we ride away all this is done without making a sound and then the cattle if it works they'll go to water then they'll go back to where you dropped them and then in a few days they'll start drifting somewhere else and those hills up there believe it or not it's on the san andreas fault which is mother nature's way of keeping us humble but what it did was put some seeps and springs up in those hills. So it's really a, a really nice outfit for being in a drought, believe me. So Mike's turned the cattle and he's just kind of watching them. And I'm quite a ways away from them to keep the pressure off of them. And now they're headed back to the corral. Now, an interesting part of this trivia is that you watch this let them out of the corral. So they left the corral, they hit the corner, and now they're coming back to the corral. All right, 99% of why they're coming back to the corral is because the one in front of them is, and their mother was last seen there. And this goes on their whole life. They try to go back where they sucked last. Well, when they get there, there's only going to be a few mothers waiting on them. But it also, in the long term, it gets these cattle gentle about going in a corral and hanging around corrals. When we gather these, we walk them in. There's no stampede. Their back end doesn't look like they spilled a bowl of guacamole on them. It don't look like that. They just walk in. And I want you to appreciate the distance I am from them so I don't pressure them. And uh, the cows on the other side, a lot of those cattle had already had their calves weaned. Because of the drought, we've been really having to pay attention to keeping the numbers right on the range. So it also helps. There's a bunch of dry pregnant cows out there walking around, and they're going off to feed, and it dries these cows that are going to be what we call tight bag. Now on that note, in about 12 hours, their bag's going to get tight, and these cows are going to want to go nurse to get the pressure off their bag. Well, it's not going to happen. So after 12 hours, there's a hormone that kicks in in a cow, and it starts to tell her that she might want to think about drying up. And that's the way the hormones work. Please don't mind the noise. It's kind of interesting. This is after Sturgis. And we're in Jackpot, Nevada, and a whole bunch of people are headed back home, so they're making noise all the way home. That's what the roar of the Harley is. Anyway, so this cow, her hormones kick in, and it starts telling her to dry up. And she'll, she'll bawl, and then she'll quit bawling, and then she'll go eat, and then pretty quick she'll dry up. And uh, we want her to naturally dry up because it cuts way down on a mastitis. And uh, the calves, of course, in three days, they usually quit bawling. And they've got feed right next to them. And that's, that's how it works. Now, for those of you that haven't been around sheep, one of the old ways of weaning lambs was to put a... You'd have two bands out on the range a mile away from the corrals. You'd bring one band in and cut the lambs off. 
then you'd send the ewes out and then you'd bring another band in, cut the lambs off, and the first set of lambs go in with the second set of ewes, and then you turn them out. And they all chase their mothers thinking their mother's in there. The fact is, they're not. So in the old days, that was a pretty slick way of, of weaning lambs. There's an example of the, the cow coming back to the fence. And you notice Mike's riding away to take the pressure off. He doesn't want to ride to the fence and, and put any pressure on these cattle at all. So there was about 60 cows we weaned that morning and you watch and you'll see the number of cows that are coming back. And you can see the number of cows that are out in the hills that don't care. So Anyway, I'll let this video speak for itself, but if you don't have the horsemanship where your horse can yield off your leg and he can stand still without getting worried about the other horses, he can back up, he can move on the forehand, he can move on the hindquarter. If you have that going for you, this makes this not only fun because you get to be on your horse, but very, very feasible because it's less stress on the cattle instead of running back and forth on a horse trying to outrun a cow. If you, if you have a horse that'll handle, you don't have to worry about that. And that's why I say the word good cattle work, good horsemanship. So we'll be doing clinics on this. And if you got a couple hundred head, you know how to get a hold of Deb. And uh, we'll see if we can't get to your country and do it. They're already hitting the That's the water trough right there. Now this hay was just put out just enough to keep them around. It's Bermuda, so it has a value of zero, but the point is it's something for them to, to, to munch on while they're going through the process. And uh, we also have lick out, which they've already been on licks. They've been on licks out in the hills for their whole life because it's always out there. In this part of the country, you have to keep a supplement lick out and everybody's deficient in something. So if you're any kind of a range manager, you can tell what your, if it's phosphorus, selenium, whatever it is you're lacking. And there's the country I ride in up there. And if you'll see that green spot up there, there's a seep right there. So there's eight or 10 cows can get a drink there and they'll never forget where it is. So what you're witnessing is an hour after we weaned them and it's starting to kind of come together. Now you notice the distance, the calves are getting away from the fence already. Now this is about a 200 acre trap and there's the lick. And uh, I just hope you enjoy this. And for folks that have never been around cattle, this is kind of a, something you might be interested in if you're gonna get into cattle or enjoy it because this is what we do. And if you don't own cattle and like to work cattle, then that's who I put in my clinics, is people that just like to work cattle. So thank you very much. We'll talk to you later.